Hi everyone, your Chess Puzzler here, and welcome to the channel. One time with finals, really enjoyable to watch and experience, have been those amazing games between Nack and Wesley. Can't take anything for granted, and this includes the very opening. By now, we have seen some very clear patterns. Look at each one of them, 27 games. You can easily spot the patterns. Nak has been far more creative with his openings, especially with the white pieces. But when he had the black pieces, he was very predictable. The one is very simple. Wesley is trailing by two points, and there are six games remaining, excluding this one. So he needs to get things right. This is the game of round 28, and all Wesley needs is to repeat his performance of game 27. Wesley has the white pieces and adopted an opening. He got the best results. His opening was the Spanish. e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, bishop e5, and Naka goes again for what he basically always does. It was another Berlin. D3, bishop c5, takes, takes. And after Wesley got the king to safety, Naka used different ways to cover for this pawn on e5. First time, he used the bishop. And the last two times, the knight. This time, he used the knight again. Knight d2 is a repeat of game 26. And this is why I'm just calling out the moves with no explanation. Naka, what did he do? He castled as he did before. Now Wesley mounts a pressure on this pawn, and Naka gets the rook involved to be able to deal with this threat. A4, A5, and B3. And you know, repetitive games can be so boring, not just for viewers, but also for players. Players go for the lines they feel comfortable with. And also, this allows them to move extra fast. Something relatively new Naka tried was his knight response to the eighth. What does a move like this do? It was too obvious not to miss. The most human response was to regain this pawn and Wesley went for it. What is more surprising is to see what followed. Can anyone see anything iffy in this position? If so, you really need to get involved. Let me say this differently. <laughs> Let me say this differently. And this goes out to every single one of you who may not be able to see what is going on. If you can't see it, give this three goes. Choosing what you think is one, the best move, two, the second best move, and so forth. This can be done in two different ways. Anyone who gets the knight to retreat to the back rank also knows why this move was played. Move number one is bishop d4. Get rid of this bishop, and the knight and many people would actually resign here. There is no way out here, and basically something needs to give. If you move the rook out of the way, the knight comes off. And if you move the knight away, the rook... What happens to the rook? He disappears. And yet, there is little something to momentarily save both pieces. Can you see it? It's this bishop response. This saves both the rook and knight. But not really. If you allow this situation to unfold, I'm sure you can work out what side is better and what side is heading towards victory. Coming back, the other way to do this is to use a type of reverse engineering. Naka took this knight with the rook, and once this move appeared, what does Wesley do? The way to soften the impact was through the same response we went through earlier. Now comes Tricky part number two. If you choose to eliminate the rook, 
you also know this bishop is also going to be arrested. And with this type of development, white is the side who's pulling all the shots. Let's come back to see how easy Naka makes things look. This is how he played it. And with this pressure in the center, this is also the very first time we see this game unfold in the way it did. Queen up the board, black here, goes for this and gains the knight and the bishop for the bishop. Some people prefer to have the white pieces and others the black. This position may in fact be no less than equal. First thing Wesley did was to attack the queen through this initiative. Queen in with a check got the king to join the corner. For anyone who's really interested in knowing why Naka delivered this check, to get the king to find the edge of the board just might be a reason for this. In simplistic terms, black has gained a tempo. F5 by Naka, and this is not looking wild, but it is. What does C3 do? It allows one or three options, and probably more. One, queen b6. Two, queen d6. And three, queen f6. Queen d7, by the way, looks also fine. But so does a move like queen c5. Wesley was not looking at blank shots and pronto activated this rook. Bishop e6, takes, takes. And this what follows has to be a really foxy one. What do you make of this attack on the bishop? Bishop d7, bishop g6, bishop e6, and even a simple g6 are all very hard options. This is what Naka did. Look slightly deeper, and this rook, e5 business, is a two pronged attack initiative. He's going 85, he's hanging. But does Wesley go for him? He does, he does. Takes, takes. And Naka is looking at anything that is going to restrict the queen's actions on a5. By the way, c7 is not also hanging. But should Naka cover? He doesn't. This is what he did. Should you go pawn grabbing? What does queen b2 tell us? If you remove yet another pawn, c2 also departs, and there's only one way to play this. Rook g1, and this game is double-edged. Can you tell who's winning and who's losing? Queen takes, maybe an accuracy, because of this guy now able to walk. Go for this discovery on the queen. Queen c8, which might be exactly what you need. And you really need to be very careful in how you play it from here on. This is in fact, let me repeat that. This in fact may look equal, dead equal. Coming back, when this picture appeared, Wesley didn't even risk it. No takes on c7 but calmly got the queen back to be able to deal with the threat this queen imposes on these white pawns. Okay, for now, at least, white is not taking on c7, and black can't get to any of these white pawns, not a single one of them. The idea, or one idea, is to try and push until there is a result. Naka once again space and activates this knight. This knight development has nothing to do with the attack on f4, but there is something slightly deeper here. The king being stuck in the corner. How would you be able to deal with the potential attack through this knight jumping to the rim? This was an extremely close call. Wesley was forced to get the queen involved, and if she is traded, so be it. Would you get rid of the queens? or preserve them. Okay, this may not be a complete question to ask. Let me do this again. Do you keep the queens on? And if so, what move are you looking to execute next? This is how Naka handled this situation. 
question is what follows next if you go chasing after the knight this spot on e5 that was not accessible will be taken up by black any ideas of trying to reach the king for this queen attack may not end up very well takes this check king up the board another takes check king f6 and anything can still happen here absolutely anything don't forget as soon as the attacks and the checks end white faces a problem on g2 slip here and you will get done okay we saw a different approach to the game altogether wesley opened up an escape path but does it help with the knight being unable to penetrate naka returns him to where he came from so what's the plan queen e2 followed by rook e1 to try and get to the opposing king h5 opening up a gap and talking of initiatives wesley takes it what do you make of this push it's probably the best thing wesley has going right now it destroys many ideas black wants to explore having exposed his pawn on the rim naka rushed the game out of danger but with c2 a sitting duck had this really been necessary talking of moves this is how wesley takes charge this game in fact is very similar to the previous one or the one before that for the players this was a speed game for you and me it's not we can take as much time to think of every single response Naka calculated he could afford to try it and this is what he did this was not a problem but what was to follow being afforded with the luxury of this check on g4 this is how you open up the game king up the board and this position has exploded already wesley eliminated this guy and with this danger on f6 black cannot touch c2 before being able to do this naka used the knight to cover but this specific response is not risk free wesley used this opportunity to slip in this check king to the back rank and this may no longer be looking good for black having followed this specific approach with the king being able to escape naka no longer worries another check and through this king move wesley was feeling frustrated another check and this can get tricky seeing what happened in the game before last anything goes queen into block for example is as bad as things come go for this check and this is how you drop the queen and the aim if you take you're also running into a checkmate from this point on whatever remains becomes irrelevant so no queen d4 but king d6 what does king b4 do though this kingside pawn is way too far do you want to know how fast this parser can run h4 bishop f7 and look at what a queen move like this does queen d4 is instant death it runs into this and it's lights out his pawn on h4 can no longer be stopped so when this check appeared naka returned the king to d6 he's on the defensive and with two points ahead all he needs is to hold it all together that's it another check and king back to c5 a fresh check and naka knows there is a strong case for perpetual so if he worries about this particular position you can always settle for a draw he risked it here with this king move this is the same exact position as we saw earlier h4 is a clear win but wesley goes for this line with rook f4 coming naka traded off the queens naka may be better off here knight e5 stops basically everything but naka chose his avenue play believe it or not wesley's so desperate here 
he misses his winning chance and probably the only one he gets. This is what he did. But why was Enrique Zerbe not better? It was. When this nightmare his presence felt, the show what this invasion does on the 7th. 95 drops pawn number one, takes here two, and there are possibly one, two, three, possibly more ways to do this. Rook takes works fine, and maybe stronger is to go for this. Knight g6, or knight d3, let's do knight d3. When this pawn on b7 comes off two, this pawn on d4 is extremely strong. White has too many pawns, and there is no way he'd be able to defend this position. Coming back, Rook e2 at 95, and Wesley looks to be in trouble. Now that I can finally come to the thumbnail I use for today's game, I hope I can squeeze it all in for you to see what is happening. Wesley's ship is in flames, And though he's evacuating in the normal way people do, he's not realising the dangers lying beneath. This fin on the bottom is one shark waiting for his meal. This shark you see behind Wesley can't wait to get his jaws working. In short, with a burning ship and a sea full of sharks, Wesley's in no state to do much. Coming back to this game, Wesley has had to jump in the deep end without the queens and try at h4. And now with the bishop stepping back, king g1, c5, and Wesley looks really confused. His king response says it all. Therefore, waste of something. If king h2, why waste a move? Now can chase after this rook. Rook up the board. And when this guy was eliminated, the end is now very near. Rook f4, king takes. And Wes is not just jumping into the sea, but will be drowning before the sharks get to him. He realised rook f4 does not work, because taking this pawn on f6 spells the end. I'm not saying anything about this fork, but to avoid this from happening, Wesley summoned the king up the board with another pawn biting the dust. This had to be over. Rook f5, bishop back to base, rook takes, and c4. And was he's looking at a resignation anytime soon. Rook back to f3. And the way forward was exactly what Naka needed and what he went for. King up the board, and c3. And how easy Anyone, including players like Wesley, can get things wrong. His next response was punishable by blah, 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 and I'm not even going to use that word. I have in mind one word in particular, but I'm not using it. He attacked this bishop, and this is where the game ended. Well, not yet. We're missing one move. Naka got this fork in, and this is how the game finished. Now, besides that missed rookie seven, Rook e2 was not that bad, you know. After 95, the key move is, can you see it? Or can you go back and look at it? Rook f2. Go for this, and the pawns begin to disappear. If not rook f2, go king h2 to start supporting what you have. The only way for black to make progress is to just get his own king involved. If bishop f7, there is g4, and don't worry about any checks. King d4 runs into this check. And if king c3, g5 will backfire. Okay, you could not allow this guy on c2 to fall. Or just yet. He's now the backbone of holding all other pawns safe. Rook back. King d4. And now you can try rook f2. King back to c3. Whether king g3 or even rook takes, both are not perfect. Rook takes, for example, king takes. Go from the only protector 
to the bear shop. And this is how you gain another invaluable point. This is what Wesley missed. And again, with another game that was set to go in his way, this is how he loses it. So before you lose a game, think of this one in particular and the great moments our best human super gems mess up. With a crucial three points gap now, Naka is already starting to feel how he will be spending this year's money. He's not there yet, but what is the chance he will lose? More to come and there isn't too much left. Back with more. So until then, everyone, this is your chess puzzler.